Minecraft is famous for its lack of gravity, allowing players to build floating structures which would be impossible to replicate in the real world. You probably know that sand and gravel are famous for being some of the only blocks to be influenced by gravity in Minecraft, often resulting in impressive collapse of terrain when disturbed. But more interesting is the scaffolding block, which can extend horizontally unsupported, but only for a short distance. In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the scaffolding block and how its behavior in Minecraft is surprisingly realistic using the power of structural analysis. Once a scaffolding block is more than six blocks horizontally away from another scaffolding block, which is built upon a solid foundation, gravity will cause the block to fall to the ground. A structure that is supported on one end and free on the other end is known as a cantilever. Because of this requirement for support on only one side, cantilever can spawn across distances where it would be impractical to put a support such as bridges across bodies of water or valleys. However, the structural frame used in cantilevers has to be stronger than a frame that is supported on both ends, which is called a simply supported structure. This is because of a concept known as the bending moment, which is a function of the applied force and distance from the support. In a simply supported structure loaded at a single point in the middle, the maximum bending moment is at the midpoint and has a value of PL on 4, where P is the point load acting on the structure and L is the length of the structure. In a cantilever loaded at the free end, the maximum bending moment is at the supported end with a value of PL, which is four times higher than in a simply supported structure. With a higher bending moment, the stresses in the structure are higher. This means that the structural frame or material used in the cantilever has to be four times stronger than the frame used in a simply supported structure, assuming the loading and the length is the same. This is why cantilevers are avoided unless absolutely necessary in most structures, because they require larger structural members which are more expensive. We can model the Minecraft scaffolding in a 3D structural analysis program to see how it would perform in the real world. Countless structural analysis programs used in the industry, with some being free and others costing tens of thousands of dollars for a subscription. These costs are justified given that these powerful programs are essential for designing some of the world's tallest buildings. I will be using SkySiv, which is a powerful browser-based platform with a free version. A structural model consists of nodes, which are points in 3D space, and members, which are straight lines which connect the nodes. These nodes and members are the building blocks that allow us to form a model of any shape. Each Minecraft block is a meter long, meaning our scaffold would extend 6 meters outwards from the edge of the central tower. The vertical and horizontal members in the scaffold are circular with a diameter of approximately 100 millimeters and a wall thickness of 10 millimeters. We can ignore the mesh in the middle of the scaffold, which, given the crafting recipe of scaffolding, is just string and would contribute minimally to the structural performance of the scaffold. We also need to input the materials of the structural members, specifically the Young's modulus, density and Poisson's ratio all of which impact the way the structure will act under loading. In case you're only familiar with density, the Young's modulus defines how easily a material will deform under an applied load, and the Poisson's ratio describes how a material deforms in perpendicular directions when stretched. We will use some experimental values from testing done on bamboo. Finally, we need the loads acting on our scaffolding. Let's consider the scaffolding's own self-weight due to gravity, as well as the weight of Minecraft Steve on the end of the cantilever. Assuming Minecraft Steve weighs around 100 kilograms, a healthy weight for the 2 meter tall giant, this is equivalent to a 1000 newton load. Finally, it's important to define some support conditions for our nodes connected to the ground. We will restrain these nodes from moving in any direction or rotating, which is called a fixed connection. Once the software has crunched the numbers in a complex process of solving differential equations and matrix multiplication, which you will be lucky to understand even after a four-year university education, it outputs the deflection and stresses experienced by the structure. We can see that the maximum stress experienced in our bamboo members is just over 24 megapascals. The tensile strength of the bamboo, which is the maximum stress it can withstand before failing, differs greatly based on the species but it's known to exceed 100 megapascals in some cases. Therefore, with a cantilever length of 7 meters, the scaffolding is at less than a quarter of its structural capacity.
However, many structures are limited in their size due to failing to meet certain deflection limits as opposed to reaching a strength limit. Deflection is the distance the structure moves away from its initial position due to the applied loading. Deflection limits are put in place so that people using the structure are comfortable and are not disturbed by excessive movements or rotations. For a cantilever structure, a common deflection limit is the length divided by 125. So that means for our 7 meter long scaffold, the limit is 56 millimeters. This limit would ensure that a worker positioned at the end of this cantilever would have a flat surface to work on with no risk of falling. From our analysis, the scaffold has a downwards deflection of roughly 115 millimeters at the unsupported end, meaning it has breached the deflection limit and would no longer be considered structurally adequate. Despite this, the in-game behavior of the Minecraft scaffold is surprisingly accurate in that it acknowledges that a cantilever structure has a limited span. The given span of 7 blocks or 7 meters is in the same order of magnitude of a real-world scaffolding system. If we add an 8th block to our scaffold, our deflection increases to 160 millimeters. That is, a 15% increase in cantilever span increases our deflection by 40%. This demonstrates the non-linear nature of structures, and structures can quickly become inadequate with small increases in length. But how could we strengthen our scaffolding to reduce the deflections and allow it to span further? We can add some diagonal truss members to our scaffolding frame. Truss structures are very efficient at spanning large distances due to the way that they transfer loads through the mathematically strong triangular shapes. If we add trusses, the downwards deflection has reduced to 30 millimeters, nearly four times less than in the original scaffold. And if we make our scaffolding out of steel instead of bamboo, the deflection drops to only 11 millimeters. This is because steel is a much stiffer material with a higher Young's modulus and will thus deform less under the same load. However, the benefit of bamboo scaffolding is that it's lightweight, inexpensive, and simple to construct which is why it's used in many places around the world in construction projects. Steel is over 10 times heavier than bamboo and much more expensive. Imagine having to craft scaffolding blocks from six iron ingots rather than six bamboo stalks. To recap, we've taken an in-depth look at the scaffolding block in Minecraft and through the use of structural analysis software, we've compared it to how real life structures work. If you've learned something about Minecraft or engineering in this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future videos about engineering in Minecraft and other games.